that one. Okay, so this is solving equations. This is something you should have seen in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. You'll see it again this year. Okay, in Algebra 3, we're just going to assume that you know how to solve equations. So if you don't know how, when we get later on to factoring and solving quadratics, you're going to be lost. So this is probably the most important thing so far. So what I always like to do is start off with something that you guys are used to. Okay? X equals 2. Okay, in math, all that means is when you see an X, X is 2. Okay? X is no longer unknown. We know what X is. We know X is 2. Okay, so what they'll do is to make it into an equation because, you know, in, in life, things aren't that simple. You can't just say, you know, in order to retire, you need $455,000. Okay, we create variables because maybe you, your house is more expensive, so you need a million dollars to retire, okay? There, there is a lot of times in life not just one solution. And so what they'll do, okay, here's the solution, x equals 2, is they will manipulate it, okay? So they'll say, well, let me add 2 to both sides, or let's, do, let's add 3 to both sides, okay? And then maybe they say, let's add, or let's subtract 6x from both sides. Okay, because I did the same thing on both sides, this equation is still true. We still know the answer. The answer is x equals 2, right? Um, maybe they add parentheses out in front of this with a 4 on both sides. Right? And so if you work your way backwards and you distributed the 4, you will eventually get back up to the solution. And the solution is x equals 2. Right? Any questions on that? I am showing you that how kind of math where it comes from, where all this algebra comes from. Okay, but we already know the answer because we started off with x equals 2. Would it help if we solved this to show you that? You want me to? No? Yeah? Okay, so let's say we started off with this problem. This is a problem in your homework. Okay? Well, first thing, there's actually two things you could do. And when you guys raise your hand and say, hey, what do I do first? Um, the, the truth is, there is not one way to do something, but there are proper procedures. What you could do is just divide both sides by 4, and the 4s will cancel. That's the easiest. Probably the way that a lot of you will do it is you'll distribute the 4 to everything. All right? So that you could get rid of the parentheses. And then maybe you distribute this to all of them. Now, if you wanted to, you could have just started at the beginning and said, okay, this is 4 times that, that's 4 times that. So I could just divide both sides by 4 and the 4s go away. Now, you look on each side of the equal sign. Anything that's like terms? Well, there's a 4x and a minus 24x. And 4 minus 24 is negative 20. You start off with $4, take away 24, you're in the hole $20. So, negative 20x, I didn't do anything with the 12, so I'm just going to bring the plus 12 down. Over here, 8 plus 12 minus 24x, the 8 and the 12 are like terms. If I can combine those. Now you look at this, and you see that these aren't like terms, these aren't like terms, they're on different sides. Maybe the teacher had a rule that you have to stay on this side of the room. You have to stay on this side of the room. Okay, and maybe I say I eventually move people over to kind of even things out. So from this step, there are four things. You could add 20x, subtract 12, subtract 20, or add 24x. Okay, once again, your choice. Let's just do the first one. Let's add 20x. So 
So whenever you add something or subtract something, you have to do it on both sides. Negative 20 plus 20 is zero. If you owe 20 and then you get $20 and you pay off that debt, then you're even. Right. So I have 12 equals 20. And over here, negative 24 plus 20 is negative 4 x. Once you get to this part, you see you have a number. Sometimes we'll call that a constant. A number and negative 4 x's. So the like terms are these two. Now if I move this over by subtracting 12, then there's nothing left over there, so there would be a zero. And you could do it that way, but that'll cause more steps. If I move the 4x over here by adding 4x, then you have your constant and your x. You can't combine those anyway, so you didn't really do yourself any good. So not the correct way, but the fastest way would be to get the 20 and the 12 together by moving the 20 over here. So the 12 and 20 over here, x's are over there. It's a positive 20, so I'm going to do minus 20. Twelve minus twenty. You have twelve dollars, and you have a twenty-dollar bill coming out of your account. You'll owe eight dollars. Here, all this is asking is negative eight equals negative four times what? Okay. If at any time, some of you get confused when the x's are on the other side. I don't know why, but if you want, you can rewrite it like this. If that's easier, any time you want, you can just flip everything to the other side of the equation. So here, I have negative 4 times what's negative 8. So I was really asking, negative 8 divided by negative 4 is what? Okay, so I would divide both sides by negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. 1x one is just x. And negative 8 divided by negative 4 is 2. Okay. We already knew the answer, right? So whoever, whoever wrote these problems, they'll start off and they'll say, all right, I want the answer to be x equals 2 thirds. And then they'll manipulate it. They'll add 2 to both sides. And then they'll divide everything by 6. Okay? So I wanted you to see that where these equations come, came from. Sometimes they'll do this to you. The, the people that write these problems start off with 2 equals 3. Is that ever true, anybody? Huh? Does 2 ever equal 3? No. You guys learned a long, long time ago that 2 is before 3. Right? 1, 2, 3. I would rather have $3 than $2. Right? I would rather have a million dollars than $1. Dollar. They're not the same number. That will never be true. But sometimes in math you get problems that are never true. And so that they, they know that the answer is not true, but they'll say, well, let me kind of make them a problem here. So maybe, maybe I add 5x to both sides. Okay. And then um, let me add, let me subtract 7 from, from both sides. And so they'll start you with this problem. And then once you solve it, you'll get 2 equals 3. Okay, 2 never equals 3. So anytime you're solving a problem and you get an answer that's clearly, clearly not true, like 2 equals 3, 4 equals 5, a million dollars equals $20, then here you would say, anybody know? I'll help you out. What, what we're looking for is we're trying to find a solution. So if there is no solution, you would say, no solution. Okay, so they'll start you off with this, and when you solve it, you'll get 2 equals 3. That's not true. Sometimes they'll start you off with a true statement. Four equals four. That is always true, right? Or how about x equals x? Well, x always equals x, right? Letter y always equals y. And they'll do the same thing. They'll, they'll make a problem, and maybe they subtract 3x from both sides. 
then add seven. And so if you were to solve this, and that's what you'll see in the book, something like that, you'll get four equals four, well that's always true. What that means is these x's don't even matter because we know at the end four equals four. So you can put anything you want in for x and you'll still get the same answer. So if I wanted to put x equals 20 in there, I will still get 4 equals 4. If I wanted to put x equals a million in there, my final answer will be 4 equals 4. Um, in other words, these are the same thing. So thinking ahead, if you had two lines that were the same line, no matter which point you choose on a line, it will work on the other line. So when they have a whole bunch of solutions, and there's so many solutions you can't count, what do you guys think that is? Okay. Yeah, you would say infinite solutions. Huh? You will end up with something like this at the end. Something that's always true. Another way of thinking of that is your x's will just cancel. Okay? Your x's will go away. Or your number will go away. So those are the three cases. Most of the time in math, there is one solution. That was our first example. Okay, when you get when you start out when you end up with something like two equals three, no solution. When you end up with something that's always true, infinite solutions. Okay, uh, the solving equations piece, I'll help you guys individually if you need that. I don't want really to go over that as a class. There is something in the section though 